this video, we'll start with a default instrument where only layer 1 is sounding. This is achieved by clicking on the trash can icons to initialize the layers. As with any FM synthesizer, we'll begin with two operators and switch off all the others. In FM, we suggest using operators 7 and 8 since these are the last two wave operators in the signal chain. Operator 8 is routed to the amplifier or audio output, represented by the letter A here. Its level is set to maximum, but this can be adjusted by dragging up or down on the matrix. When we now play a note, a sine wave is heard. Now we'll route operator 7 into operator 8. The higher we set its level, the more brilliant the sound becomes. In this example, we'll set it to roughly minus 25 dB. With FM synthesis, it's all about levels and ratios. You have just seen and heard how the level of one operator modulating another operator affects the resulting sound. Now let's see what ratio does. For every operator, you'll find its ratio in the left column, both for quick access and visual feedback. You can change each digit of the ratio individually, so when you want to change the operator ratio in whole numbers, just click and drag on the digit in front of the decimal point. So this is how whole number ratios work. Basically, a ratio of 2 means the operator oscillates with twice the speed as the other operator, which is set to 1. But the real beauty of FM synthesis is to use fractional ratios, like for example 3.5. You may notice this sounds a bit like a bell. Now to make this really sound like a bell, let's adjust the envelopes of the two operators. For that, we'll first navigate to Operator 7's page. A bell sound decays after a couple of seconds, so let's set the time of stage 2 of the level envelope to around 6 seconds and its level to 0. To make things easier, we can freely zoom in and out of each envelope with the mouse scroll wheel. A typical bell sound wouldn't stop that quickly after releasing the note, so let's increase the release time to say 2 seconds. Now to make our life a little easier, we can just copy these envelope settings and paste them into the level envelope of operator 8. You can do that by clicking the little copy icon found here. Switching over to operator 8, we can paste the settings into the level envelope by clicking on the clipboard icon. And now we have a simple bell sound. Now we've created a basic sound, let's further explore the possibilities of the FM matrix. Operator 7 doesn't have to be rooted into operator 8. You could also do it the other way round or both ways. Please take caution though, when you apply too much feedback this can quickly result in a harsh digital noise. Such noises can however be used to create a noisy click or to add breath noise to a sound. Also, an operator can feed back into itself. For that, there's a separate column called FB, which stands for feedback. Let's see how that sounds with operator 8. And now, operator 7. You'll notice they both sound different. Let's now take a look at what the sync column does. If you are familiar with analog or virtual analog synthesizers, you've probably stumbled across a feature called hard sync, which basically resets the wave cycle of one oscillator as soon as the cycle of a second oscillator folds over. This greatly expands the sonic abilities of such instruments beyond their otherwise pretty limited sawtooth, pulse and triangle waveforms. And sync certainly expands the abilities of this FM synthesizer. So let's hear it in action.
When you want to use sync in a sound, the operator to be synced should be tuned higher than the operator it is synced to. So here we have operator 7 being synced to operator 8. Let's hear what it does. Our bell sound has now turned into something that resembles an artificially bright sounding guitar. And just for fun, let's see what would happen the other way around. Well, that wasn't too successful with this sound setting, since operator 7's ratio is three and a half times that of operator 8's, but it might make sense with other sounds that you come up with, so be sure to experiment. Let's now go back to our bell sound without the feedback, sync, and other recent adjustments. What if we wanted to play our bell sound dynamically, with different velocities? Let's first set the velocity on operator 8, since this is the one we actually hear. This seems to only affect the loudness of our bell, which is a bit boring, isn't it? It would be much more interesting if the velocity changed the brightness of the sound, as it would occur in real life when you strike a bell with a mallet. So let's turn down operator 8's velocity a bit, and turn up operator 7's velocity. When we now play very softly, you can hear that the bell sounds very muted, almost down to a pure sine wave with which we originally started. And as we play harder, the sound becomes brighter and brighter. That sounds much better. And it was this very technique that started a revolution when FM synthesis was introduced 30 years ago, as you needed just a couple of elements to create completely unique sounds. So where do we go from here? Well, you might want to add a third operator that modulates operator 7 with a very short click to get an interesting attack sound. Or instead, you could use the noise operator for a similar result. Why not copy the settings for operator 7 and 8 to operator 5 and 6 and detune their ratios a bit? This will give us a much thicker sound with a typical detuned effect. As you begin to explore, you'll soon appreciate the almost limitless capabilities of FM. Thanks for watching this video.